Seems like only yesterday I was ignoring another Disney Plus Star Wars series because I just can't bother caring anymore. But with the Acolyte, I thought perhaps things will be different. We're following Jedi again, and they're cool. They have lightsabers. So I wanted to invest some time in it because time is precious and we have so much to watch now on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. And I mean, there's so much trash out there. How do I find the proper one to dedicate my own personal time to? So I watched the first two episodes of The Acolyte and I'm going to tell you about them now. This is going to be a spoiler-free-ish review, I guess. I'm not really sure how to talk about this without giving a little bit of the plot away. I'm not going to obviously reveal any big things. Not that anything really big happened in the first two episodes. We're, we're really setting things up, kind of. This is set in the final days of the High Public era. I, I don't even know what that means, and I've seen a lot of Star Wars. I don't really get too invested in, like, Old Republic, New Republic, Side Republic... Republic Clear, Republic Plus, things like that. It doesn't matter to me. I just kind of base it off what the ships look like, and then I get an idea of where we're at in time. This did appeal to me for several reasons. Number one, it's got Jedi, it's got lightsabers. That's enough by itself. Two, it appears to be a standalone story that doesn't necessarily lead into any events from the prequels or the sequels or whatever. It's just, it can live on its own for once. I'm sure there'll be plenty of tips of the hats and all that crap, but for now, it's kind of its own thing, and I appreciate that. And three, it's got Carrie Ann Moss. It's got Trinity in it playing a Jedi. I'm in. I'm all in. And for the first five minutes, I was definitely on board with this thing. I highly recommend watching the first five minutes. It's a great action sequence, a one-on-one -on -one fight. It has some Matrix-inspired kung fu going on, blended with Star Wars force powers and lightsabers. Great stuff. It almost tricked me into thinking this was going to be a worthwhile show. Almost. And I couldn't help but feel incredibly betrayed by advertising as Carrie Ann Moss doesn't show up again for the remainder of the episode and the one to follow. What the fuck? Is she going to show up again in this season? I don't know. I don't know. But what a waste of a cool character. Instead, we get to follow Disney Plus Presents a character. Osha, in this case. A very bland, lame character who looks cute. She definitely has that Disney gloss to her, but doesn't bring much else to the table. She has a sister, though, which I guess is kind of a spoiler if you don't look at IMDb, who is named May. She's the evil counterpart, and that's what the central plot of the show is about. These two sisters coming head to head. One, trained by a mysterious evil force. The other, a Padawan who walked away from the Jedi to become a mechanic. Known in the Star Wars universe as a mech mech. Stupid. And might I just add, we get to see Osha do her mech mech chores, which is going out into space and putting out a fire. In space. A fire in space. She puts it out. It's even got the bonfire crackling sound. Like the audio designer went out into the woods and just recorded people roasting marshmallows on a campfire. Here we go. <laughs> if you listen very closely, you can hear the faint sound of Cub Scout Charlie asking if the campers want another s'more. Jokes and science be damned. That stuff really doesn't bother me. I just find it funny. Star Wars has always been like that when it comes to weird kind of inconsistencies in that universe where things are blowing up and dropping in space. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But, I mean, come on. We got guys jumping around, flipping in the air with lightsabers using the Force. I'm good. I can stretch my imagination. I wish this show could more, though. It really does seem like a TV series on Disney Plus, and that sucks, because this had the potential to be something great. We have a premise of a Jedi assassin running around cloak and dagger, picking off these different mentors and these people of higher skill sets. That's cool. Why is it so Disney? I mean, it's on Disney, so I... Why, though? This should have been a dark-ass show. There should be... I, I mean, I want an R-rated Star Wars at this point, and this would have been the one to do it. I want a decapitation. 
All right, I want to see a short for decapitation. I want to see a head get chopped off with a saber. I want to see some dipshit pull out his blaster, get it force pulled away, <laughs> spin it around on him, <laughs> and put it right through his head. But we're not going to get that. And that's a shame. Because the takeaway I get from this series is I'm not the target demo. They're going for younger kids. They're going for a newer generation, maybe teenagers, maybe those in their 20s. I think most of my ilk have kind of walked away or we maybe are slightly looking back, hoping for some glory and unearthed gem, but it's just not happening. Even when we do get it with the Mandalorian, which I thought was fantastic, it, it just it just drops so badly and so quickly in quality by the third season. Obi-Wan was an embarrassment. I didn't even bother with Ahsoka. And here we have The Acolyte, a show that is incredibly, incredibly mediocre across the board. I wouldn't say it's bad. I don't think it's awful or insulting. But then again, I've already checked out of Star Wars for the most part. This is just me trying. It's me trying to become a fan of it again or watch something and get engaged. And as it stands, I'm just really not. There is something here, though. The concept is sound, but the execution leaves a lot to be desired. Now, one of the things I think works very well is the action. You had that big one in the first episode. Second one has a couple of cool moments as well. So if that keeps picking up and we get more of that in three, four, five, and however many, I think this is seven or eight episodes, okay, there's, there's something there. But as for the overall murder mystery thing going on, it's just not playing out in the most riveting of ways. The sister dynamic... It's got potential as well. Again, the look of the film has that Disney polish. It's got that gloss to it. Uh, it has that digital background effect that I just don't find to be that fascinating to look at. I want something grittier. I want something closer to what Lucas put out originally, but we're way past that at this point. And, that, and again, that's, that's fine. That's just a personal beef. Outside of that, I just don't have much to say. Most of the characters are pretty bland. They're they're fine to look at. No one's really standing out at this point. May, the evil version, she's cool. She's flipping around and doing stuff. But even to her, the, the pageantry where she gets into her like Mortal Kombat fight pose before she battles, it comes off as more silly than it does threatening. She has a friend in episode two that works at a little shack. He looked just like Ezra Miller. I thought it was Ezra Miller for the longest time. It's not, I don't believe. Uh, IMDb says it's not. But maybe Ezra has a twin and he's in this. Maybe there's like meta commentary here. We have twins inside of the Star Wars show. Everybody you see in this has a twin in real life. That would be pretty wild. Uh, I don't think that's the case though. The Acolyte overall, not like a huge failure in my books, just nothing exciting again. This is like standard Disney Plus crap, Hawkeye sort of a thing where it's watchable, but by the end of it, I'll probably, I'll probably lose all interest altogether. Maybe not though. See, I will watch episode three. I'll keep going on this journey and we'll see if I can last. Because <laughs> at this point, it is an endurance test to get through a lot of these Disney streamers. Okay, let me know your thoughts, though. Are you on board of The Acolyte? Do you think it's one of the better Star Wars shows? Or are you like me and you gave it a chance? You're like half in, but really, at the end of the day, I could be doing anything else and it would probably be better. Let me know. Leave a comment. Like the video. Please think about subscribing. I post lots of movie content. Occasionally, I dip my toe into a TV series, especially when there's really nothing in theaters like right now. But I do have new movies coming up. New good stuff's coming to theater soon, and I will be reviewing them, so I'd love to have you stick around. All right, hopefully I see you next time. Take care.